Welcome back to Late Night New England, folks. You know, here we always find the funny. Joining us here tonight on the Late Night Program, a very funny gentleman, a friend of mine, uh, works all the clubs in colleges across New England, radio personality as well, and he's also big on the podcast thing. Ladies and gentlemen, let's give a big late night welcome to the very funny, it's Mr. Tom Stewart. Tom Stewart. Thank you, Mike. Thank you, everybody. Glad to be here. And before I start, um, I'll clear it up. I'm not the guy from the Subway commercials, <laughs> so stop asking me how to lose weight. I did it the old-fashioned way, ramen noodles, just like college. And just like college, I had a good day today. I had what I like to call a couch and TV day. I don't know if anyone else has ever done that. I, some people call it being unemployed. But yeah, I lost my job. I wasn't fired, though. I was laid off. You know, laid off. It's the only time getting laid's not a good thing, you know. But it lasts a lot longer. Uh, I had a pretty interesting job. I used to be a traffic reporter. I used to get up bright and early every morning just to tell you how late you were going to be for work. That was my job. I did that for four years, and I figured it out. I figured out why there's always so much traffic. It's actually a technical thing called um, people are idiots everywhere you go. You ever pull up to an intersection at the same time as someone else? You try to be nice, let them go first. You give him that universal wave, you know, that go ahead, you can go wave. What happens? They wave back at you. No, you go. <laughs> and you're like, idiot, I'm going to miss out on Duncan for this. Let's go. And you start waving harder, thinking that's going to help you, right? And it never does, you know? And the worst part is when you let someone go and they don't give you the thank you wave, right? You know, just a little thank you wave. And then you've got to follow them home and kick their ass. You've got to do that. It's a New England thing. You know, it's the worst. And around here in Massachusetts, oh, the worst part about driving is the construction. I mean, every road, every bridge, always under construction. We're just going to get a new state flag. It's just going to be a big orange flag. You know the one we're talking about? Get one of those ladies of work boots and just wave it at the border. Just, yeah, welcome to the construction state. Here we are. That's the worst. But anyway, that's what I used to do. I used to be the traffic guy. I, luckily, I had this lucrative comedy career to fall back on. You know, really killing it here on public access television. Yep, going really well. The other day I tipped a bartender with some CVS Extra Care bucks. So, you know, it's going good. It's going really good. <laughs> now, I don't know if anyone else has jobs or not. I mean, I don't know, but if you ever lose your job and you're sitting around watching TV all day, the worst TV show to watch when you're unemployed is Wheel of Fortune. Because Vanna White has the easiest job in the history of the world. And it got easier as she did it. You guys remember when she used to turn the letters? Do you remember those days? Why is she still up there? I mean, I don't know how hard your job is, but when there's a puzzle with like seven of the same letter in it, that's a bad day at work for Vanna White. Can I get a T, please? Well, there are seven T's. And you know, she's back there at the wall going, are you kidding me? I gotta push seven of these buttons in a row? This is ridiculous. And you know, they have Wheel of Fortune in 50 different countries now. It's the number one game show in the world. Now, our version is in English, of course, but in other countries, Wheel of Fortune has to be in their language. That's gotta be kinda strange in some places, you know? Like China, for instance. The Chinese read from top to bottom. That means some of those puzzles have got to be five stories high. And that Chinese Vanna White can't be very tall. And they don't even use letters in Chinese. They use symbols. Yeah, I'd like to buy a fish with an arrow through it. I mean, I don't even know what letter that is. And they didn't name it Wheel of Fortune either. They changed it. In China, they call it Wheel of Fortune Cookie. So, yeah, you know what? Forget it. I like that joke, okay? <laughs> And it always gets a round of applause, but that's all right. But it is true, really, everywhere. Uh, in Italy, they have the Italian version of Wheel of Fortune, where sometimes contestants buy vowels by mistake. A! I'm sorry, sir, there are no A's. <laughs> oh! Yeah, no O's either, Anthony. You're going to have to spin again. Oh, in Poland, they have the Polish version of Wheel of Fortune, 
where every puzzle, all the letters are already showing. <laughs> and then as you guess, she turns them backwards. No one's ever solved a puzzle yet. <laughs> Israel got the Jewish version of Wheel of Fortune, where contestants tried to negotiate over the price of a vowel. I'm like, come on, Pat, give me two for 400. I got cash. <laughs> no, but the weirdest one of all, Pakistan. Yeah, they have the Al-Qaeda version of Wheel of Fortune. Every puzzle has the same two letters, L and A. It's always the same answer. <laughs> and if you hit bankrupt, the wheel blows up, so it's pretty extreme. <laughs> My name is Tom Stewart. Thank you so much for having me here. It's been great. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, very funny. Very funny. Thank you. That was some good stuff. Boy, you've been doing the, uh, you know, you look a little bit like Jared. <laughs> yeah, I get it a lot. From I get Subway. it all the time. Yeah, yeah I, I used to get it so much that I decided to make it a joke and just, just address it right away. <laughs> sure, sure. Now, you've been doing, uh, doing stand-up for, for a long time, Tom. Yeah, I'm going on nine years now doing this. I can't nine believe years. it. it nine a bucket years. list moment, and then next thing I knew, it was becoming a job. Now, how did you start? Well, you know what? I, I always wanted to, uh, I used to always write comedy, whether it was a blog or a little top 10 list or something, you know. And then one day a friend of mine said, hey, I took this comedy class that was really fun. You should take it. And I was like, really? She's like, yeah, you'll, you'll spend eight, eight weeks with people who think like you. They find funny and everything. And I was like, yeah, that sounds like it'd be fun. So I took the class and after the eight weeks, next thing I knew, bookers were calling me. It was great. <laughs> Sure. <laughs> <laughs> they don't call anymore, but they were, they were calling then. <laughs> you mean bookies. <laughs> uh, yeah, and that's just how it snowballed from there. Yeah, it's, uh, it's a grind. We obviously, we both do the, uh, do the comedy work. And uh, on any given night, you just don't know what to expect. No. I mean, we've God all no. dealt with the perfect show where mm -hmm. the audience is attentive. You've had a nice meal before. <laughs> Everything you say, they're clapping. Yeah. And then, of course, the flip side is we have the hell gig. Yeah. Well, whenever you have one of those good shows, you're never happy about it because you're like, the next show is going to be hell. Because it always balances out in the end, right? Yeah, welcome, welcome to the world <laughs> of comedy. Uh, of comedy. Yeah. Uh, but how do you deal with, uh, you know, uh, and now in the world that we live in now, people are hypersensitive. Um, you, you're, you're a clean comedian. You're very observational. But yeah. I'm sure you've, you've encountered uh, the heckling. Um, mm, oh, yeah. Well, I'll tell you what. I had an advantage going into comedy um, when it came to the heckling part of it. Because uh, I used to work at a strip club. Believe it or not. You know, don't get excited. Put your dollars away. Danger. <laughs> you know, I was a. I, it wasn't a Magic Mike type of thing. I'm. I'm Tragic Tom. It's a different movie. <laughs> no, I uh, used to work as a strip club DJ and MC. And one of my jobs at the strip club was on a busy Friday or Saturday night. I would have to go up on the main stage with a cordless mic. And uh, they would do like a two for one special. So all the girls would go into the back room so that they could get ready to come out on stage for a big presentation. So my job was to go on stage and entertain the people in the crowd for like five minutes while they got ready. So just picture a room full of drunk, horny guys on a Friday or a Saturday night looking at a stage wanting to see naked women and they got to see me instead. <laughs> You know? So I, I got a lot of heckling. Back. <laughs> I want my money back. Yeah. So there was a lot of heckling going on, and it was really nerve wracking, but it was kind of like being thrown into the deep end of the pool. You learn how to have a thick skin and how to give it back to people real fast, you know? I mean, back then I had, you know, pretty big bouncers backing me up. I don't have that at comedy clubs, but. Would you call this job a resume builder? <laughs> Not necessarily. No. Actually, you're, uh, you're one of the more normal guys. It's um, the saying in the business is you either come into the business crazy or the business will uh, make you crazy yeah. and you're pretty uh, you're pretty level-headed you're you know, not uh, you don't have too many quirky things uh, you know what's funny is i always say that i'm too normal to be doing comedy i don't know how i do it because i'm i'm white i'm straight i'm single I have a pretty normal <laughs> upbringing like i really don't have a lot of material to go on so i'm stuck with subway and wheel of fortune that's what i'm doing do you know what um, <laughs> do you know what the what the future holds do you predict uh, any any big things going on well, you know, I just keep plugging away and just trying Ooh. to do bigger and better shows. I'm always writing more material, trying to lengthen the set. And, you know, I mean, here I am on your show. I mean, does it get bigger than that? 
No, this could be rock bottom. <laughs> uh, but no, it's um, hey, it's it's just you just don't know. As long as you're enjoying it and you're you're, you're in so many different things, you do radio, but now you have I a do. podcast. I do. I have a podcast that's completely unrelated to comedy whatsoever. And and, and you, stripping. Yeah, or, or stripping. Yep. And you know, you were talking about quirky. One of the quirky things that I did in my life was I used to be a paranormal investigator. I really was. I did that for like four or five years. And all my life, I'd always had interest in things, ghosts, UFOs, whatever. And so I ended up being an investigator for a while. And over the years, I've got a lot of different stories that I always tell people at a bar or whatever. And people were always really interested in them. So I finally decided, I'm going to make it a podcast, tell sure. these stories. So every week, I put out a short little 15-minute story of one experience I had in the past. And I just kind of tell it like we're sitting at, the, you know, at a campfire and we're just telling spooky stories back and forth. And that's basically what it is. So I call it My Paranormal Story. The title pretty much tells you what you're in for. And what makes it different is that all these stories are true because I really experienced them. And then through my storytelling, you get to experience it too. And what's the, uh, where can people find out about this? Oh, it's on all the major uh, podcast places, iTunes, Stitcher. Uh, we just got on Spotify, TuneIn, and uh, you can go to myparanormalstory.net for the website, and you can listen to it right there, too. And you're a very funny man. How do people find out about your comedy, Tom? Uh, TomStewartComedy.com. You'll see some videos up there if you want to see some of my demos, or you can check out my schedule to see where I'm going to be. I'm hoping 2019 will be a big year. I think you and I have a show in January. We do have a show yeah. in January. It's, yeah. uh, it's, it's Tom Stewart, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. If you go to his website, you will get a six-inch sub for free. <laughs> it's the Late Night New England Show. It's our good friend, Mr. Funny Man, Tom Stewart. Thank you so Please much. Please come back, Tom. I will, I will. <laughs> Don't go away. Coming up, the very, very talented Miss Kelly Lennon will join us here on Late Night New England.